Hello and welcome to Tabletop Bob. My name is Bob. I'll be your dungeon master for tonight's episode of Curse of Strahd. And boy, do we have a good one here. We've got, of course, Tim joining in from the nearby Red Lobster in California. Um, (laughs) Andrew, Michelle, Stefano, and our special guest. If you you had Jordan from Flute Salute, mark it off on your bingo card. Jordan, welcome to the channel once again. It's a pleasure. And uh, Jordan, uh, you know, we don't know. The players have no idea who you're going to who you're going to be playing, but they did meet you last week because we had some tech uh, issues. My internet was cutting in and out. We couldn't stream, and so I wanted to apologize to everybody uh, for who was waiting in the stream last week. We really wanted to get that off. Uh, we got to meet Jordan though behind the scenes, and uh, we're ready to play tonight. But before we jump into our game, we got to talk a little about you, Jordan, because uh, maybe, maybe people out there don't know who you are, you are, but they should. Um, you've actually been on the channel before. You've played in a couple of different live plays. Um, and uh, I guess probably the the first one, though, was um, Skyhorn Lighthouse, right? Is that the first one? Many, um, many years ago? I think that might be the first one, yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think we played with Esper and Fritz and uh, Sarah. It was a good game. Uh, we did a couple, I think it was three or four sessions, but um, it, I'm happy to have you back on the channel now after it's been at least at least a year or two. So happy to have yeah. you back. And Jordan, tell us, who, who are you? Who exactly are you? If they haven't seen that episode, who are you? Yeah, so I'm Jordan. I am from the Flute Slute YouTube channel and website. And... I, uh, I'm based out of uh, Utah, so I'm joining a bunch of uh, Bob's uh, friends from, seems, seems like all over. I, don't, I didn't actually get a good read from where everyone is, but <laughs> assume a lot of New Yorkers. But um, I am a seasoned uh, DM, and I really like improv. I do improv comedy shows most Fridays um, out of each month, at least when I, I don't have my kids to uh, round up. And so um, for paying audiences, not just like, some like rando group in like a library you know oh no we got it we had to bring in the professionals i said this is unacceptable the level of amateurism we've got here we need a pro so we brought <laughs> you in yeah i, I mean I, I have some professional uh pedigrees i mean i've been doing it for more than 10 years and so awesome. I, I like to kind of talk about improv on my channel as well as other anything D D. Um, so my, one of my most popular videos that people say they keep watching all the time, when especially when they're starting a new campaign, is my 17 tips for better role playing mm. um, based on improv principles, and it's really simple. And it's one of the first videos I've ever made. So I'm kind of like a oh, wow. block of wood when it comes to my charisma. My hair is weird, but the <laughs> content is is really good. <laughs> Aren't those first few videos you put out there so cringe? I feel it. I hear you. I have a couple of those videos. Remember, everybody here remember Avernus? Oh my goodness, we had no idea what we were doing. It was, it was crazy. So we've evolved. You've evolved. I love your channel. Um, we first met uh, you. Um, you reached out to me because we were doing work on Candlekeep Mysteries, and we were doing all those candle keeps that uh, nearly killed me here on the channel. And I wrote a, a, a little article for your website. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Flute Slew, we'll put we'll link everything down below, the YouTube channel, the website, uh, all that good stuff for you to, to uh, do after the stream. Once the live stream's over, we'll put it all up there. Might even put it as a pinned comment, but um, but yeah. And one thing else I wanted to touch on is here. You have a ton of Curse of Strahd content on Flute Slew on website and YouTube. Um, how many times have you run Curse of Strahd as a DM? I've run Curse of Strahd two and a half times. <laughs> Um, it, 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 feels like, it feels like three, 
Um, one of my videos is a, a, a horror story where I, I actually had to split up the kids. <laughs> um, so um, the, like in real life, like the people just weren't getting along with each other um, that were the players. And I didn't want to just cut the campaign off. So I ended up splitting in it. And it, so it was kind of like at that point in the game, we diverged and I ran two different games with like, kind of like two different timelines where the main characters are different. <laughs> And oh. so I, I ran up for those people. Oh. And so, and then uh, one other time that was, uh, it didn't have a split. And so um, it feels like I've run it three times. Awesome. And you know what? It's funny. It's funny. Sally. I feel like um, when you run Curse of Strahd, I'm running this now my second time, it does feel different every single time. Do you get that feeling? Yeah, it's, it's a fun campaign to run more than once because it really is driven by player choice and they design into it. Uh, a few different details that can make things go differently. And so I, I think it's a lot of fun in that way. Yeah. And I, 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 I think we mentioned this. Um, um, I, I mentioned this at least at the beginning of this, that I've run this before and I'm going to do some things a little different than the first time I, I have run it. I didn't run it on the channel. Nobody else saw it though. Some of the other players on my channel, I ran it for in person. Uh, but we actually communicated. I reached out to you because I said, Hey, I'm running this. I know you've run it a few times. You have some videos and I asked you for some advice on the uh, the Taroka deck. Um, now, I don't want to bring it up yet because I want to save everything for the end of the, the stream. But let's just say that um, I, I took some of your advice for this campaign. So um, really, I want to be a say that we can all blame you if it goes south. Sure. Okay, I'm, great. I can be a scapegoat all you want. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I need, really, honestly. as Since I've done started this thing on streaming and stuff... I just want scapegoats, and uh, that's why I bring in these players. So if I could always blame them for any of the failures, so thank you. Yeah, just blame me. It's all right. I usually do. Um, I know. I usually do. I know. Um, but yeah, so uh, obviously we are a little disjointed today. Tim, Tim, you're you're traveling, traveling the world. Um, where where are you today? Uh, right now, this very second, I am in San, like just south of San Francisco. Which Red Lobster is it? Uh, it's the Red Lobster in Canyon City, I believe, nice. the, the town I'm called in. So, you know, ah. hopefully the power remains better here than it is in New York. There we go. And for the rest of us, we're all kind of in our normal situations. Uh, but it, we think we're going to be good. Uh, so we want to jump in. Ready? Go here. Sure. Okay, yeah. Right. Let's do it. All right. So as as I think our name is sticking here, we're jumping into Grace. Grayscale. Grayscale. Grayscale gang. I love it. So, uh, last time we played, which was just about two weeks now, um, we ended up having quite a... And let me know the volume levels, YouTube, because I uh, uh, just want to make sure. I always have a hard time judging the volume on our end and your end. Let me know if you can hear the tabletop audio um, loud and clear or too loud. Um, we'll try to be aware of it. We left off on a Feel cliffhanger. Um... The group or a cellar hanger. Yeah, it was. A cellar hanger. Dione and uh, Kanas, the Michelle and, and Stefano's characters, you were ended up uh, finding the orphanage of Velaki and headed into the basement to find Anna, who was uh, the sister of uh, Camilla, who you had made a deal with earlier in the episode before. You found her. She was trapped, locked in a cage or in some sort of like a, a sewer drain, um, and she was presumably there for quite some time. She said that she felt like um, it had been days at least that she had been missing or gone down there. For Rufus, that'd be Andrew's character, and Laurent, Tim's character, the two of you ended up going to the north. You went to Lake Zarevich because you heard that a strange man was uh, carrying a, a little girl, another child, uh, out onto the lake. And it seemed strange to Angelica, the friendly Velaki NPC you met, um, when you first arrived. So you went there and found out that, yes, this man who may not have been all, uh, had all his marbles or perhaps was a little too, too uh, had too much alcohol the night before, was trying to fish and use her as bait. So you saved her, but then you encountered a werewolf on the docks waiting for you. Um, let's just say you escaped, but our good new friend Bluto did not. He met his, his fate with the uh, werewolf. Uh, but the rest of you came back to town with the girl, and you saw your your good friends, the hunters, um, 
uh, oh gosh, their names are escaping me now. Zoldar uh, and Evgeny. Evgeny, yes, Yevgeny, thank you. Yeah. Um, and they said that they talked to um, the the Martikovs. They talked to to Erwin at the Blue Water Inn. And said, you know what? If you want to go to the Wizard of Wines, the vineyard where they get their wine from, um, that's going to be that's going to bring you a long way. Uh, it'd be much appreciated by the townsfolk as well as the people who, of the Blue Water Inn, even if Erwin's wife Danica doesn't really uh, like you all that much. It's going to do a long. It's going to go a long way for your reputation. So um, you'll leave tomorrow, and uh, then all of a sudden the idea came. Why don't we just go to the Vistani camp and bring this little girl Arabelle back to her her parents? Um, and that's where we were headed with with that group. Uh, and for those of you who asked for it, I did create a children guide I, w- I, ha- I can't call it children's guide because it's not a guide for children but it is a guide to the children that we've met the NPCs there are astonishingly I think like seven or eight children that you have encountered met and they're all kind of roughly the same age so I broke down uh, a chart of them all where you met them all that stuff and you can access it too it's down below in the description so take a look at that um and with that, I think we're ready to jump into the game. Uh, we're going to start right where we left off with uh, with Rufus and uh, Laurent. Rufus and Laurent, you're you're headed out of the gates. The in this case, you're heading out of the west gate of Velaki. You're you've got Arabelle in tow. You've got um, Evgeny and Zoldar. They're heading, uh, leading you. Right, the two of them are in front, walking. You're keeping up with them. They go at a brisk pace. Uh, you know that they've promised to bring you to this Vistani camp and they'll get you there very quickly within the hour very easily. So as you're walking and, and going through, you notice that they're very astute. They're very aware. Um, they're noticing things about the, the path, almost like they recognize it like the back of their hand. And no doubt, within the hour, you are at um, a break in the woods. The woods part and reveal an expanse clearing. It's a small, grass-covered hill with low houses built into the side. Fog obscures the details, but you can see these buildings feature elegantly carved woodwork and have decorative lanterns hanging from all uh, their sculpted eaves. Atop the hill, you can see that there is a a, a little fog, but above that, uh, you can see a ring of barrel-topped wagons that surround a large tent with a column of smoke pouring out through the hole in the top. The tent is brightly lit from within. And you can see, even at this distance, you, uh, sorry, even at this distance, you can smell the odors of wine and horses that emanate from this central area. And so with that, we're going to bring it to you. Um, what do you do? Evgeny and Zoldar say, we, uh, Evgeny says, we've arrived here, the Vistani camp. And it's still pretty early in the day, right? Like we, or is it now, like close to evening? It's early. It's it's like mid morning. Yeah, it's definitely not the afternoon yet. I'm gonna ask them. Uh, would Would you guys mind waiting here for just a moment? You know, the path doesn't seem that complex, but we hate to get lost on the way back, and we're not staying too long. Uh, you want us to wait here? If you have nothing else to do. Oh, we intended to. We have no desire to go and uh, speak with these Vistani. No offense, they say to you, Laurent. None taken. He's not Vistani. Oh, he's not. That's right. I forgot. You're not, right? No. No. no I'm, from, I'm from. I'm from Neverwinter. Never Zoldar from Neverwinter. Zoldar will whisper to you, Rufus, but loud enough that Laurent can hear. You have to be careful with them. They're tricky. Well, I trust him. At least you do. Go on. Enjoy. Bring the well, girl back. This girl is eager to get home. Let's take her back. Come on, Arabella. Let's go. And Arabella says, yes, this this is my home. I I didn't know how to get here. I got lost. Oh, Thank you for on, bringing Arabelle. me. Let's go find your parents. Yeah. And she'll, uh, she'll actually, you know, like, like kids do, just giddy and happy that she's returned home, will run up ahead of you. Oh, I don't let her do that. I grab her. Oh, but I know the way now. Oh, come on. Let's go together. All right. What happened last time we let you wander off all alone? It'll you be fun. Up fish food. Come on. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, I am going to uh, switch us over to roll 20 here. 
We're all on roll 20, right? <laughs> we all have that. Oh, no. I set that yeah. up for you, right, Jordan? You're, you're, I forgot. Did I set that up for you? Yeah, I I'm in there. Okay, good, good, good. All right. If every if anybody hasn't used Roll Twenty lately, they've changed the way you bookmark things, and it's kind of great because you can always just like grab the uh, the bookmark token. But I feel like I overshoot the uh, the page sometimes. That makes sense, and like it always goes to a different one. But I think I got it right here. Okay, place your tokens onto the map towards the north, and I will uh, I'll bring you to where you're supposed to be. And then for our viewers who are watching, I'm going to switch over in just a second. Perfect. There we go. Yeah, right up top. Yeah, right right about here on this path. Yeah. Bring your tokens there. Okay, great. And uh, Jordan, I'll, I'll bring you in in a little bit. Uh, you might you might be able to see it already. Okay, so um, here we are. So the hilltop, as you can see, Actually, I'm, I'm going to... Is it just me? The lighting is kind of throwing me off. Is it throwing you all off? Can't see a thing here, can you? Yeah, there's lots of block light. Yeah, I'm going to take off the lighting. I don't think we need it. So I'm going to take it off. Here we go. Is it like a hill fort? Like an Iron Age hill fort? It's kind of like that. It's, it certainly is a hill. And you can see at the top of the hill is this big tent. The one that I told you was br brightly lit. It, it's got... Got it. You hear the sound of people from it, the smell of wine and horses, that sort of thing. It's kind of emanating from, from that area, that central location. And you see, like the tokens suggest, tons of horses um, right. just kind of waiting, saddled up outside. Um, um, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. At the very bottom of the map, I'm seeing that there's like a kind of like looks like artistic depiction of there's also more permanent structures. Um, yeah. Is this no, like that... a, a like semi-permanent camp or is this like they're migratory? Like what, what am I looking at? This is exactly the perfect view that you would get. It's this bottom area where it's it's not an artistic view. I mean, I guess it is, but it's all artistic. But it's the view that you see. <laughs> so you do see this. This is your perspective right now. So yeah, you see okay. homes built into the like the the foundation of this hill, this mound. Uh, up top is where you see the tent. And oh. um, I think this comes in pretty well on yeah, roll twenty. It looks good actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's what you see, and uh, Arabelle will walk with you. As you approach, you see there are a number of people out and about. Um, no doubt looks like Vistani. You can see a few other Vistana who are out about the wagons up top. Some are milling about around the base of the, the, of the hill. Um, but, yeah, with, without, without a doubt, you can see that there is, uh, there's people here. And some of the Vistani will, will look at you and, in a quizzical way, look at what you're doing with Arabelle. Arabelle, could you take us to your family? Yeah, I, I can. I live this way, and she'll point towards uh, one of the, the, the big Vistani tent, one of the wagons up there, and she'll say, come on, follow me. We'll follow her. On the way? Yeah. yeah. You don't get too far, though, before um, you can see what looks like a man with his with the, with the hood and cowl up, almost barely showing his face. Um... You can see him walking around the mound. He's one of the people there, but he doesn't look Vistani, or at least it's kind of hard to tell because of the cloak and, and the way that he's uh, situated his cowl. Okay. I, you know, I don't know. I'll just look at him, but whatever. Uh, Jordan, why don't you uh, describe a little bit about what you might look like? So you see a... a uh, a man with a, a slender build, um, obviously, as, as Bob described, uh, cloaking himself quite a bit. Um, he has a, a long, narrow nose that comes to a point, and um, long hair kind of like draped over his eyes, you know, kind of that early 2000s emo <laughs> kind of look, you know? Yeah, I know, exactly. And, he, but he, but he, he doesn't walk around like he's some kind of urchin. Like he's he's upright and um, methodical and seems to move around with purpose. But there's also like a, a defeated kind of sorrow to his gait as he walks. And uh, he's kind of lingering around 
Um, like he kind of like, you know, like when someone's like at a party and they're <laughs> kind of like not part of the in group and they're kind of like hovering outside of it, looking for an opportunity to perhaps insert themselves into the conversation. That's the kind of um, vibe he's got right now. Does he look elvish? Like a dusk elf? He does look like a dusk elf. Hmm. And Arabelle will run and actually kind of, you know, kids have, they don't really have that like sense of um, space. She'll like run right past you and brush past your your leg, kind of hip checking you. Um, <clears throat> doesn't knock you over or anything like that, but she, you know, has no no regard for you as she runs past. And uh, Andrew, okay. I know you wanted to keep her close, but she's so excited now that she's so close to her home. You want to follow? As we, yeah, definitely follow her. And as as we walk past the, the hooded figure that she just so rudely hip checked, uh, would like to apologize. Like, ah, oh, sorry, it's uh, kids. I'm gonna uh, stop. I'm gonna stop and get distracted and look at the hooded figure, like kind of in an embarrassed open mouth way, embarrassing open mouth way. Oh. And I'm gonna call to Laurent. Laurent, the card of the seer. The Dusk Elf living among the Vastani. Mm. Help him and he will help us in return. Do you remember? Uh, I rack my memory and then I I wrote it down. So yes, I do remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who will help an <laughs> ally against the devil look for a Dusk Elf living among the Vistani? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay, yeah. Yes. Help him and he will help you. Uh, and slowly the, the, the dawn of realization crosses both Tim Lucas and Baron's face. <laughs> don't you love that when you and your character are, are really in sync it's art imitates life you know? right so I'll he gives you nod at him for now yeah and uh jordan you see these two people they they do look strange they don't look like any of the people that you typically see around here um but you see arabelle running up towards her tent and they're 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 pursuing but you see one of them can you describe your character uh, rufus Oh, okay. Rufus is tall. He's over six feet tall. He has kind of um, Conan-esque hair, but it's it's bright ginger. He has kind of red ginger hair. Um, he's very pale, very strong, very manly, a very attractive person. <laughs> but he's wearing really awful hide armor. It makes him look like a little bit of a Muppet, because it's very <laughs> old-fashioned. It's kind of stinky. It's also wet. So, yeah. Mm. And he doesn't seem to have any possessions. He just has a kind of a fancy looking sword. And, he, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. Or a shield, a really old shield. And um, Laurent, why don't you describe your character? Sure. So um, kind of like a dusky olive, olive-ish skin, like Mediterranean or like Italian. Um, and then dark, longish uh, hair. Um, slightly longer than the early 2000s emo, uh, but maybe a little bit better kept. Um, and then uh, for clothing, uh, relatively simple, not wearing any armor, um, but wearing more of like a traveler's, traveler's kind of clothing. Um, and both a human, backpack. correct? Both full both human, human. I'm human. Yeah, and uh, he does have a, a look perhaps similar to the Vistani that you are familiar with, but something's off about him. He doesn't look quite like he fits in either. And they'll walk past you. Um, and you hear Arabelle uh, call out, um, Daddy, Daddy! And you can see a man exit the big tent. And he rushes to her, grabs her, uh, gives her a big, huge hug. He's a pretty imposing man as well, actually. Um, he does have a, a, a look of the Vistani, but um, kind of a gruff beard. And always like a, like, looks like he has a, like a, always a mean face. I want to say resting mean face i would say is is the word i would use resting mean face and it, he gives a real good stare as he looks down to the three of you now um of course jordan you know who this character is you've been amongst them for many many years this is luvash luvash is one of the vistani who uh has a seven-year-old daughter named arabelle and she um you know just by being here um over the last few uh, last day or so there's been panic because she went missing and uh, he's been all out of sorts. And everyone has been uh, looking for her. In fact, a lot of the Vistani are not here right now because they're out searching for her. 
Hello there. Hello, I am Rufus Gwendar of Gwendar. We have brought Arabelle back, Arabelle back to you. Who might you be? Talking to Luvash, right? Right, yeah. He says, The name's Luvash. What'd you have to do with this, Casimir? Uh, I don't believe I have anything to do with this. Uh, <laughs> this is not my matter, Luvash. You have your daughter back. No, greet, no. Greet your guests properly. We have These never met friends? this. We have never met this elf before. It is I, Rufus, and this is my friend Laura. We rescued your daughter. Are you familiar with the with Bluto? Another Vistani person? He nods in, in, in realization of what happened. Bluto took her I knew to it. the lake and was using her as bait in a bag for the fish. We had to rescue her otherwise she would have um, she would have drowned that imbecile he says uh, looking at the two of you eyeing Laurent pretty pretty harsh I suppose you want a reward well we don't need any reward but if you, one thing I am looking for is any kind of armor that is better than this dinky hide nonsense if you would know where I would get any armor. Hmm. He looks around. He sees that there's a group now of both Vistani as well as uh, some other elves, actually, come out of their hovels to look at you. And he says, perhaps we have something. I'll talk to Aragal. He says, stay here for a while. Come into the tent. Oh, thank you. He in. says, and you too, Casimir. I'm keeping my eye on you. There he is. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess I have nothing else to do today. All right. Yeah. He says, I'm watching you. Come. So the three of you head up the hill and into the tent. We're going to go to the orphanage now. As a, a, a nice, seamless transition happens. L uh, Kanas. You hear Yune call to you telepathically. Kanas, they're coming. Hurry. Get out of there now. Uh, where are they? If, if we go through the... Did we go down a, a ladder or, or stairs or what was it that brought us downstairs? I think it was stairs. stairs. There's a hatch underneath the shed uh, or within the shed that led underneath it to this torture chamber. If we, Yuna, if we come up the stairs right now, will we be in plain sight? Yeah, that man's there. He's just about at the shed. The one with the shovel. Uh, is there a place where we could There's hide, a... like, around around the side of the stairs so when they come down, they won't be able to see us? There's a pile yeah. of hay. Kanas, are you very large? We could, like, in theory, just, like, keep the hay on ourselves. Hey, no. I'm, like a re I'm just, like, a regular-sized human. Oh. I'm trying to get into a, a vantage point where I could see them come down, but they can't see me. Uh, yeah, there's a so underneath there's a like an under the stairs area, so you could totally. I'm gonna bring up our map right now so you can see um, where you're at. Um, again, always always tricky trying to find the right. Oh yeah, I overshot it again. Here it is. There we go. I believe you are. Yep, you're right here. Perfect. So the stairwell here has a little. I mean, you could easily fit a, a full human, a normal size human like yourself underneath the stairwell Rufus could even fit on the side of this yeah there you go if you'd like to throw your tokens in here just so you could see you can move them put them in into right into the right here or I could do this for you let's bring in Casimir let's bring in whoa Casimir's uh, token looks awesome yeah nice let's bring you right here you're just you're just 
witnesses. You're not actually doing anything. Um, but yeah, you can hide right under the stairwell if you'd like to, um, Kanas. Okay. Uh, Yune, where is the where is the woman? Madam for mayor? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <laughs> what, happened your, what happened to your voice? <laughs> Madam for mayor? Yes. I don't see her. I think she's still in the cafeteria, yelling at all the children. Okay. Uh, Dione? Yes, Ganas. We are going to... I'm going to go hide under the stairs. I suggest you come, too. As soon as the man comes downstairs... The man is coming! He's coming, yes. Oh, oh, of course, you can't hear. Oh, uh, Jesus! Yes, he is, <laughs> he is coming. He is coming very soon. I suggest we go down the stairs, and uh, as soon as he comes down, I am going to cast darkness in this room. So you will not be able to see. And ah. Anna... I, I pick her up. You will yes. also not be able to see, but do not be frightened. Do not okay. scream. Got it. Don't scream. Dione, you will hold on to me, and we are going to get out of here unseen. Okay. Okay. And uh, and uh, I, I guess I'll like look over at the stairs. Does it look like there's enough room for the both of us, or potentially even three of us? Or is it like just one person and no extra space? I mean, it's not a, if if you're not in combat, um, there's no reason why you couldn't occupy the same square. I mean, a five foot square, I could definitely fit two people in it. Okay, all right, sounds good. Okay, so move yeah. yourselves. Yep, over there. So go to the the the, the wall. Perfect. Good. Well, look, Diane, I can't even see you anymore. It's amazing. <laughs> you're so hidden. I'm just so stealthy. You are. All <laughs> right. So, uh, the door opens the hatch opens you can hear the creaking of the hinges the rusty hinges um, allowing full entrance into this chamber see some light uh, from uh, from the outside right there's the shed has a door as well to the outside so there's some light let in and then you hear booted foot um, footsteps on the stairs the wooden stairs creak as one by one slowly the man descends and of course, I described Bradamir before. Uh, Bradamir is he's a bit on the older side. Um, you know, he might be around the age of like 60 or so. He's got a gray beard, gray hair. He always carries around this shovel. Um, that's kind of like his thing. He's always walking around and he's got this shovel with him. And you can hear the metal of the shovel, just the, the, the metal of it, the, the spade, starting to drag along the wooden steps. And the thud, every time he takes a step, the shovel thumps down with him. You know, yeah, every time I watch like a horror movie and there's a scene like that, I always mm -hmm. think like, why would someone carry a shovel like that? That's such an inefficient way to carry a sh anyway. Okay. Well, he he's the groundskeeper, so I'm sure he's got some groundskeeper knowledge about shovels and how to hold them. Dragging them along. Yep. So he's there. He's down. He comes down the steps, and he looks. You can see through the the the, you know, through the stairs themselves. You know where you could see the feet coming down the little openings, um, you see him looking, his eyes scanning the area. And the first thing he notices is the grate that was both unlocked and now open. Does he start heading that way? He will. Yeah, he's going to start to cross. But he's going to look, and let me see. Give me a stealth check, all of you. I'm going to roll one for Arabe uh, Sorry, Anna. I'll roll one for Anna right now. Open. She's decent. What'd you get? Do we get well, advantage because we're hiding? I'll give you advantage because of the darkness. You don't get advantage because you're hiding. Hiding is the check. But it's pitch black down here, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, hiding. Yeah, or right, at least yeah. dim light. And he would have disadvantage on that anyway. Okay, with advantage, I got a 26. 21. Nice. Okay. So he clearly is struggling to see very well. So you can hear him taking out like a lantern. He gets to like the middle of the room and he begins to take out a lantern and uh, getting ready to light it. That's what he'll do this turn. What do you want to do? Uh, so here's what I'm going to do now that he's in the center of the room. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'm going to cast Darkness in the center of the room. Which is a 15-foot radius. Darkness uh, is 15 foot? Yes. I thought it was bigger. Is it not? Well, it's a 15 foot radius. Oh, so 30 feet. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 30 foot diameter, yeah. It's most of this place. So there it is. That's that's where I'm essentially casting it. Right on him, basically. Yeah. Okay. Um, Let's see. Does this have any verbal component or no? Ah, oh, shoot. It totally does. Yeah. Okay, give me another stealth check. Uh, this time, it's not about advantage. You're, you're saying so, uh, something out loud. So go ahead. Give me a stealth check. See if you can whisper it, but articulate it enough that the spell will be cast. Okay. Or at least hide it enough. Yes. 15. Okay. That will succeed because I rolled poorly for him. Okay. So you cast darkness, and then he'll light his lamp, and almost immediately as he's lighting it, no light shines. Mm -hmm. And he's he curses to himself, mumbles. We're okay. You're, so you're at, getting at out this now? point, we're 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 running up the stairs, and, okay, uh, and I told Dione to hold on to me. Yep, and, and so is Anna. Anna. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So the two of you run up the stairs. And you hear him as you're going up the stairs and he hears the floorboards creaking, the stairs creaking, I mean. Um, Wait, get back here! And he, you hear a thud as he runs into one of these pillars and he's like, <laughs> oh, get back here! You're not supposed to be here! And he'll try to make his way over there, but he's kind of lost. The two of you get up and into the courtyard. You can see um, there's still a commotion at the cafeteria, maybe, like I said, maybe like 60, 70 feet away from the shed. Um, you see uh, Madame Vermeer is just, um, you know, kind of yelling. You can see Yune in raven form swoops out the window, finally. She's chasing mm -hmm. him with like a her with like a broom. And um, <laughs> she'll see the three of you in, in the courtyard. Damn it, Yune. <laughs> uh, that was the wrong time. I couldn't do it any longer. She had the broom. Yune, that was the wrong time to fly out. <laughs> you didn't tell you me not to. to. Oh. If you had to estimate the distance between us and Madame Premier, how far would you say she is? It's like 60 or so feet. Two movements to get to uh, the, the cafeteria. Because remember, that's the back of the of the entrance. Let me actually see if I can put you there. Um, let's see. I have to switch us to another page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there it is. And I think you're on this page, or at least uh, most of you are. Um, yeah, that's perfect. So, yeah, there we go. So that you're like 60 feet away from the entrance, which is right about here. That door. That's the door that Madame Vermeer is at. Okay. Um, so while she's still like far away enough, I presume she can't hear us if we speak in low voices. So I'm going to lean over to Kanas and I'm going to say, Kanas, I think perhaps Anna did not act on her own. Why would some small girl want to see some bones? Perhaps Madame Fremer made her do this. I think we should take her. Take her for questioning. Are you talking about Anna, the child that's with you? Yeah, like, if we assume that she stole the bones, why would some kid want some bones? Oh. So Diane thinks perhaps she did so under the coercion of Madame Fremer or someone at the orphanage. Is that the presumption? I don't I don't remember. I don't think that. Well, maybe that know. is. Maybe it is now. Well, we we saw a lock of blonde hair, and right. the only two people that we've seen with locks of blonde hair are her yes, and yes. Uh, and the other girl. Her sister. Camilla. Yeah. I don't have I don't have my notes with me. Camilla. Thank you. So um, right now, Madame Vermeer sees you at the door, and she says, "You bring that child back here now." I don't think that's going to happen. We're oh. taking this child with us. 
Yulia. I grab. Oh, oh go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go. I, I just like I grab Anna's hand and I slowly start backing away. <laughs> the the way to get out it would be to go around the building at this point. So um, you'd have to go, you know, probably to your to the east or to the west and and just get to the front you know front gate again because right you're encircled by that wrought iron fence. Right. Okay. I grab Anna's hand and I slowly start side shuffling. Okay. Towards, so you start guess, to like make a west. run for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very slowly. Um, she won't give chase, but she will uh, call out to Yulia, who's inside, and she's like, Get the children up to their dorms. Now, I want attendance taken. Everyone accounted for. And uh, Yulia, you hear her inside, and she's like, Yes, madame. Come on. Come on now. And she's wrangling, like, you know, the 20 kids that are in the, um, the, the mess hall and bringing them up. Um, and she says, I will be watching for you. The mayor or the burgomaster will hear about this. Well, I don't think the burgomaster will want to hear what we saw down in the shed. She'll narrow her eyes at you, and she says, this won't be the last time we meet. Listen, Madame Vermeer, you don't have to tell the burgomaster anything, and we don't have to tell the burgomaster anything. As you know, in Velaki, all will be well. Isn't that correct? All will be well. She, like, ruffles her nose, scrunches her nose, and she says, yes, all will be well. And she'll slam the door to the cafeteria and, and lock it. A pleasure. Oh, so nice to meet you. Uh, thank you for having us. <laughs> all well, right, do you hightail it out? Worked out, yeah. Look, we okay. well, yeah. let's just I'll just walk at this point. <laughs> yeah, I thought I she mean, would be I was trying us. to go unseen, but you, you do hear you the, the shovel. It up. No, you do hear the shovel from the shed still. It's like clanging against the hatch. It seems like he's gotten out of the darkness. All right, man. Uh -huh. I'll yeah. take it, make a quick pace. Okay, come on, come, you know, <laughs> you fast walk around the <laughs> orphanage, <laughs> yeah, and get to the front gate. Okay. All right, so you get onto the main streets and you head back towards the Blue Water Inn, which is where you left your companions. You said you would meet back there. Okay, so we jump back to our friends um, at the Vistani camp. Woo! All right, I'm going to keep our big faces on now. So the Vistani tent. Uh, outside the wagon, you can see our several empty casks of wine. From inside the tent, you can hear the crack of a whip, followed by the howls of a young man. You can see campfires, three of them, filling the tent with smoke. And through the haze, you can see six Vistani um, passed out on various places of dead grass. Um, a barely conscious and shirtless teenager hugs the central tent pole, his wrists bound with rope and his back streaked with blood. An older... Um, man um, is there talking with him, seeming to just kind of like uh, taunt him in, in a sense. Um, and he looks like a uh, someone you recognized him. This is the same man that came in that first night at the um, the bar you were at. You were playing cards, typical card game, and he dropped the letter um, that told you that the burgomaster requested your help. It's the same man. Noted. Um, he doesn't seem to uh, look up from what he's doing. He's having some small words with this tortured uh, young youngster. Um, but now you see uh, uh, Luvash come in and he says, All right, brother. Take it easy on him next time. And he hands him back the whip. Luvash grabs it. And he says, I think Alexei has learned his lesson. Who are your friends? Well, what? Who are your friends? And Lubash says, thankfully, they brought back my daughter. And you see Arabelle come out from beside his leg. She seems unfazed by this, like this might be a regular occurrence. What is the lesson Alexi is being taught here? I hope that's nothing to do with the missing Arabella. 
No, no, no. Nothing, nothing of the sort, Aragal says. Uh, he's got a, he's a charmer. Let me, uh, I think I have artwork for him. I'm going to see if I could bring it up for you. This is the bigger guy who was doing the whipping, yeah? N Luvash was the bigger guy doing the whipping. Um, Aragal is the, uh, well, he's the charismatic guy that you met uh, maybe a few weeks ago. Got it. Let me just bring our, oh, and I did it again. There we go. Back to our camp here. Go ahead. You have uh, something to say, though? Uh, no, I'm just, just curious as to what Alexi did that re would require such a uh, strict and swift justice. This is the guy you met back uh, at the bar and the person who's kind of in charge right now. Wow. And for our Roll20 people, I will show you. Here we go. He says, oh, you look familiar. Do I know you? I was just about to say the same thing. I can't place it, but I'm sure we've met before. Hmm. Well, I meet so many people along my travels. Luvash, who are... I can only imagine. How in the world did they find Arabelle? Luvash says, I believe Bluto took her. We saw Bluto. Hello. I am Rufus Gwenda. Glad to meet your acquaintance. And um, I'll tell the story. We met. We saw Gluto. We followed him to the lake. Mm -hmm. He was trying to drown Arabelle. We saved her. And then a werewolf came and ate, basically ate Bluto, which we thought was kind of providential, as it absolved us from having to take any punishment towards him. And then we brought it straight here. Don't worry. Bluto was a waste of resources. We well, understand was, um, if you we understand if you had to do away with him. Well, we didn't do away with him. He, he was he became resources for a werewolf. Mm -hmm. He winks at you, <laughs> so right? He werewolf. provided those resources back in the end. Werewolf, got it. He says, "Don't worry about it. Oh, no, no harm done." Certainly, you brought... a werewolf. Yeah. But Maybe there was a werewolf. Maybe there wasn't. Well, what did this Alexi do? Why is he being whipped like this? Does he uh, stole him something? Release him, he says. Uh, and you'll see Luvash go and and um, and release him. Um, he's, it's not important. Um, it's not important. And Alexi, who's like, you know, basically being whipped to the point of nearly being passed out, he says, "I told you I didn't take Arabelle. I was watching her carefully." And Luvash takes him out of uh, the rope tie and brings him, kind of. Brings him out of the tent and uh, is a little rough with him as well, but he he realizes that perhaps he was telling the truth. So he'll let him go, release him. Um, and Luvash says, and I don't know, but Casimir has something to do with this. He was com communicating with them. Communicating with who, Casimir? You all. And Aragal goes, really, Casimir? I didn't know you left the hovel. Well, I, I typically don't, and so I've never met these people in my life, eh? So, sounds like a load of rubbish, your theory. I'd like it to be left alone with my thoughts. You know, we have to keep a close eye on you and your people. Some people say never met we him. are dis uh, untrustworthy. I don't know, the Dusk Elves perhaps are rivals for us. They both laugh. Right. Well, I guess you're wanting a reward. Uh, yes. I, well, I know that we don't need no reward for rescuing Arabelle, lovely as she is. It was we would always have done it. I just was asking if you had any he wants any kind armor. of armor or chainmail. He look wants at this, armor. Look at, look at this armor I'm wearing. I've been able to source armor here. I believe we have something we could provide. Don't you, Luvash? And he says, get these. Get these lazy bums up. And he looks to all the people who are passed out. And they've drank almost all the all the wine we have left. Are you short of wine? <laughs> Especially after last night. He looks at you with this wry smile and says, We had quite a party. And of course, oh, Arabelle went missing, so the party was, uh, well, it went south quickly. Uh, elbow Rubens and say, Look familiar? 
Maybe what your happened? daughter wouldn't go missing if you had the temperance of your ancestors, Luvash. Oh, you Luvash, you, 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 uh, any, any sort of, you know, you know how to get right under Luvash's skin. And, and he clenches his fists and he says, he says, you shut your mouth, Casimir. Your ancestors. We should talk about them. Well, it just so happens that we're going to the Wizards of the Wine tomorrow. So perhaps Ara we can bring some back for you. Aragorn's like bright-eyed. He's like, whoa! Excellent! It's about time somebody took on this uh, brave expedition. Yes, we've got to go and sort it out. I but mean, I would maybe I would need chainmail in order to do that, or some other form of better armor to brave the wilds. Oh. Casimir, is this your idea? Is this just an ex excuse to get out of here? Oh, do you want me to leave? Oh, I thought we were getting cozy in here. But I, I, I do recommend if you're going to give them a reward to get on with it. But and if you think I'm one of them, then I think you should give me a reward too. But if you don't think I am, I think you should just drop that all at right now. Well, I I know you're not smart enough to uh, do something that clever, but just remember that uh, we're always watching you. You can but go to never... the wizards, but this will always be your home. Well, we've never met him before, but Casimir, would you like to come with us? Well, do you think that I I could uh, it could have a mutual benefit, and so I wouldn't mind getting to know you a bit more? Yes, I feel like there's a path, but there's set, been set before us to go together. I wouldn't go that flowery, but all right. Um, I, I'd gladly accompany you so that I can get uh, some privacy, as you can see. I, I have a lot of eyeballs on me here. Well, uh, yes, and it's not flowery. I mean, we've we've been chosen by destiny to be here. We have, have some you. kind of mission to solve. All right. Well, I'm sure that you think so. I feel that you are meant to help us. What uh, mission is this? Well, Where are we you don't. From? No, we don't. We're not. Uh, I know there is a mission, but we don't know what the mission is quite yet has not been revealed to us. The, the steps still need to be revealed. I remember now, he says. Looks over at Laurent. We met... Yes, Daggerford. I remember now. I was about to say, I was going to say, have you been to Barovia? Because you, you had a letter from the Burgomaster of Barovia. We have met. He, he's like, he like, he like, <laughs> it makes this like, oops face, and he's like, Sorry about that. I, um... Boss's orders, you know. Who's the boss, then? Why'd you have the letter? He says, well... In time. He says, I, I remember you now. Yes, you were you were cleaning up at that card game. One does what they can to make it by, right? I apologize for everything that's happened to you since then, but, uh... Just know... There's no hard feelings, personally. It's never personal. I'm just, just would just like some answers. I'm sorry, I don't have many, but uh, you know, you know what would really help all of us out is getting some more wine. Feels like a starting point. Yeah, ab absolutely. But you gotta be, you gotta be careful here because Rufus and Bastani's and wine, dangerous combination. Oh, don't I know? He says, Rufus, is it? You wouldn't happen to know a place called Gwendyar, do you? Well, I am Rufus Gwendyar of Gwendyar. That's the name. I knew it. I am the brother of the Lord Rupert himself. You know, you're making quite a name for yourself here in Barovia. I've heard well, of Rufus of Gwendyar. I didn't think he'd be this redheaded. Well, the name Rufus is... Gwen Darian for red. <laughs> Is it now? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. What have you heard about me? Tell me. Oh. 
Oh, just that uh, a group of adventurers led by someone named Rufus of Gwaindire. Yes. Yes, robbed and stole from the village of Barovia. Robbed and stole? Yes. Well, that's not correct at all. You broke into a shop or some, some sort? Oh, the shield. Well, we I had wouldn't to... go back to the village if I were you. No, we, we we had to take the shield for our adventures to protect ourselves to do our glory. Something else and I the, heard was the interesting. Would charge in a ridiculous fee. Something else I heard that was very interesting was uh, the burgomaster's daughter Irina went missing just about the same time you arrived. Interesting. No, that's an interesting coincidence. Hmm. That's particularly interesting because you had a letter from the Burgomaster too. So if you have any information on that, we'd love to uh, rest you know, in peace. Notes. He says, "Rest in peace, the late Burgomaster." Oh, you heard about that? Word travels fast for the Vistani. Yes. Well, we've we've ourselves met um. Who was Are the Vistani person we met? The the seer lady? Oh, Madame Ava. Madame Ava. Madame Ava. We ourselves are close friends with Madame Ava. Tell me, did she read your future? We spent the night in the camp with her. Interesting. He seems to be taking mental notes right now of all this. And um, did she enlighten you? Well, she was a very interesting person to get to know. Very wise. Some say that. Some say she could be a bit um, foolish with who she trusts. But I wouldn't go so far as say she trusted us. We just stayed in the camp. Gotcha. Well, you're always welcome here. Especially if you get us that wine. Am I right, Casimir? Well, we... Uh... Yes, they will definitely like the wine. And when you come back, I would love to hear more about your time with uh, um, the Burgomaster's daughter, Irina. Well, would you like to come with us to the wine place? To the, to Wizards the Wizard of the, of the, of the wine. Wines? I don't know, Casimir. Would you like me to come along? Uh, no. I knew it. He says, don't worry. We'll let you on a little bit of a leash. In fact, I was just headed uh, headed east. Perhaps might stop by the village myself. The village of Valaki? Uh, Barovia. Barovia. Ah, Barovia. Yes. I'll be telling everyone the good news that uh, um, the wine will be back anytime soon. You Perhaps, can tell I'll by, we'll... uh, Perhaps I'll stop by... Ravenloft and let everyone there know as well. Oh, you're good friends with with Strahd? I wouldn't say good friends, but... Uh, no, a, loyal, a loyal servant. We all have our... We all have our bosses. He looks to Laurent. Anyway. Certainly we do. Give him some armor. And uh, Luvash will come back, and he'll bring you some some. Uh, what's what's hide? Is it a medium? And it's a. Uh, I've got medium hide is medium armor. Yeah, medium armor. Um, he will bring you. Roll me a. Let's see here. Give me a dice roll here, Andrew. Give me a. D three. Uh so I got a three on a d6, which is a two. Okay. He will bring you... You got a d3? Well, I rolled a d6, and then mm -hmm. I got a three, so I'm saying it's a two. It's a two. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Scale mail. It's uh, better than hide. Mm -hmm. It's got a 14, um, 14 well, base. Not, yeah. At least it's not soaking wet. And it does look relatively new. I mean, it was clearly... 
used. It's taken off of somebody, but it's not damaged like the one you have on right now. It's not, you know, soaking wet. Um, Does it stink? Yeah, it's clean. It doesn't, it doesn't stink like this stuff. Yeah. So you have scale mail. That's what it'll give you. Well, um, thank you for this. And Aragal, so you're going to the village of Barovia. I make relatively frequent trips all over the place. Well, um, perhaps you could take this this hide mail back to um, build rats as payment for the shield. I paid for this one, good and square. He'll be very upset, I'm sure. Upset? Well, yes, that I didn't apprehend you and bring you back. Oh, well. No. Uh, I am not working for the Burgomaster, so... Your secret is safe with me, Rufus of Gwaindire. I won't give up your your secrets too quick. Well, it's not a secret, but okay. So, um, he's going to let you try on the armor, put it on. Um, he'll take the armor from you, and um, I have a lot of lot to um, to do around here. And he kicks one of the Vistani who are sleeping. He says, we have to get up and about and get uh, get some of the trade flowing. He says, we uh, we have to break everybody back. They're looking for Arabelle. Why don't you get started on this? Before we go, can I just ask you one more question? I'm sorry. Sure. I was under the impression in my travels that Vistani were a nomadic people, but it seems that you have permanent settlements around the base of the hill. Can you, can you just, what's up with that? I wouldn't call these permanent. This is where the Dusk Elves live. Isn't that right, Casimir? It's a correct statement. Did anybody hear that notification? Yeah, yeah I'm not sure what it is. My computer that's, is like... That's just me, me casting prestidigitation <laughs> on that new suit of armor for Rufus so that it's not so dirty. Yeah, I know. My, my computer is like freaking out with these <laughs> notifications. I don't know. I've never had this before. Prestidigitation. There you go. Um... Turn so off sparkly. the notifications. Thank you. Anyway, um, yeah, so the Dusk Elves. This is where the Dusk Elves live. Isn't that right, Casimir? It's a correct statement. It is where I dwell and my people dwell. Unfortunately for him and his people, their, uh, their days are numbered. And so they remain here. It seems like there's, there's not many at all. There aren't many. How many do you have left here, Casimir? I think in the last census we had a few dozen. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm sure you'll enjoy your time away, but remember, we will be watching you. Good luck. And I do hope that we don't have to continue to bring in our own wine from outside. I do enjoy, despite its reputation, the grape mash. And he's going to uh, bid you farewell, and uh, you can leave the tent. All right, let's jump over to our good friends in the orphanage. Uh, you exit the orphanage, uh, and you finally get back to the Blue Water Inn. When you do, you can see Erwin, the owner. He looks at you, Dione, and he says, um, Your friends, they're not here. Uh, yes, they are uh, just taking care of some business, um, but they will be here soon. Don't worry. And we still have Anna with us, right? Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. We do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have another child with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, where who is, are... Uh, who is this? Yev yeah, where are Yevgeny and Zoldar? I'm confused, he says. I thought you went with them. Well, we were going to go with them to the Wizards of the Wine, but we were told to meet them here. They've been gone for quite some time. I believe they left. I saw uh, the the one, the Vistani and um, the Redhead. They left quite some time ago. Do you know which direction they went in? I, I believe it was to the west towards the Wizard of the Wines. Hmm. Look, they I'm, would not, they I, would not I, have left without us. It seems strange that they wouldn't have 
come to check on us, isn't it, Dione? Hmm. You've been gone quite a long time. What took you so long? Uh, we got a little sidetracked. Yes. And and who is uh, this? Who is this child? I, I remember you walked around the other day with a different child, a three-year-old. Well, you know, you find <laughs> children all over Velaki. This one uh, we're bringing to our home. Really? Because since, since the orphanage opened up, I would say you don't see too many children on the streets. Hmm. Well, I've hmm. seen many children on the streets. Some just hanging out in the church. Um, meanwhile, <laughs> coming from the opposite direction, you do see Laurent, Rufus, and they've got a man with them. Long, uh, like I said, cloaked figure approaching. Oh, thank God. I'll oh. see you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a very strangely, strangely tall child. Much taller yeah. than usual. It's a tall child. Yes. Usually we pick up children who are uh, closer to my head. He's I an elf, so he's probably not that tall. Uh, how tall would you think you are, Jordan? I don't even know. They, they don't tell you. Say I'm about 5'9". Oh, you're pretty good for an elf. Pretty tall for an elf, then. So, uh, you see the three oh. figures mm -hmm. approaching. Oh, my God. Micah, is that you? <laughs> oh, my God. You could, it could be Micah. Oh, my oh God. they grow so fast. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Can I ask Diana? The only... Diana? <laughs> the only... <laughs> oh. <laughs> you rescued Anna. Yes. Yes, we yes. did. Uh, uh, we were just Anna. about to go out back and see if... Uh, Camilla is in her stable. Excellent. <laughs> Did, does she know about the bones? Did you ask her about the bones? Uh, not yet. We we just got out of a very scary situation. So not why would, yet. Why would she know anything about bones? Well, She's, first, let me introduce our, like new, seven. our new companion, Casimir. Uh, hello, it's nice to meet you all. I'm Casimir. We seem to have an errand to go get some wine together. I've been cleaning your companion's new armor that he was rewarded with. Oh. And he seemed oh. quite uncomfortable with his previous adornments. Oh, I see. So are you like a servant? This is your job? <laughs> no. no. Um, I'm actually... Uh, it doesn't mean much, but I'm the leader of the Dusk Elves what remains of us here in Barovia. Casimir was a dusk elf living among Vistani. I think My eyes widen as soon as he says he's a dusk I elf. I think if we help him he will help us in return, won't you, Casimir? With the wine, of course. Uh, y yes, I, I think I I have a I, I have reason to believe that you, you seem quite intent on doing something during your stay here in Barovia as the new crop of adventurers. What do you aim to do? Save as many children as we possibly can. Yes, this is our third. Oh, or our fourth. I don't uh, know. Maybe I like seven? Know. Seven, yeah. seven, eight, nine? This maybe is not we are going for a clean baker's dozen. This is not a land that values children, I will say that. Uh, listen, Casimir, we are, we are still learning the ins and outs of this place. Have you lived here your entire life? No. Ah. I was, uh... My people in Strahd, back before he changed, were at odds with him. And simple tale says he conquered us. And the Vistani, they were a different people back then. Took us in. And us people with no home, we found a home amongst them. Times have changed for them and for us. And so it's been a, a tough life, let's say. And uh, here I am. Well, how old, how old are you? 
<sighs> I must be. It's tough. To, I stopped counting, but you must be some, hundreds of years old. Let's ballpark it at uh, five hundred. And how long have you been here in Velaki? Mm, maybe four hundred. <laughs> oh. Long time. Yeah. Well, then you've seen long time. Many a burgomeister pass here in this godforsaken village. So I, I will chime in one thing here. So Casimir, you've definitely been to Velaki. I don't know when the last time, and you can you can totally decide this, but you haven't probably been here for quite some time. Uh, it's you, you know. You you tend tend to have stayed away from most of the the settlements for the most recent probably modern future or modern modern times, but um, mm. you know it's up to you. I've got a question, and I'm not sure if it's an in character question or not. Does that mean that like my understanding is that time has been like kind of like stuck in a loop in Barovia? Does that mean that Casimir is not stuck in the loop and like recognizes the passage of time? That's sort of a theory that you have. I don't know that you've you've actually discovered that. I think there was certainly um, this was all kind of brought up when you realize how old the attire was, like all the all the how the clothing and things that were like very outdated, like hundreds of yeah, years we've outdated. Seen, like the streams of adventures go by, and everyone seems like, oh, look, another crop of adventures, even though like it should be like hundreds if not thousands of years have passed for that number of adventures to like pass through here well you you can ask this to casimir um but uh the that procession of the dead that you saw in mm. barovian cemetery that's of like all time so but go ahead you can you can go back to in character you could ask i uh, think yeah, casimir I mean, might have some so Casimir. Hey. Time is complex. <laughs> it's and not I'm so a simple complex. Man. Okay, well then please explain to me. You want me to explain time to you? <laughs> we, we're, we're going for a walk. We've got time, you know? Alright. Well, time is a construct to give our mortal brains some sort of semblance of order amongst the chaos it helps us track things and we take note of it but to the higher powers it, it's nothing to them it's based in time nothing if your body didn't entropy and fade away would time even matter to you well, in time is uh, only marked by those that pass away in Gwaindar we had the most fantastic golden clock in Castle Resplendent that I enjoyed oh, to look at as a boy. I Hold often on. contemplated time while looking at that clock. Was that explanation just off the top of the brain, or did you write that down? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I have a lot of time to contemplate. So, off the top of me head, I suppose. But it's uh, a, a well-used head. Note it. Listen, Casimir. Uh, do you believe in fate? Fate? No. It's like time. I can explain this one. I get this one. That's great. Thank you, Laurent. Well, listen. Um, or if I did the believe last... in fate. Sorry. After the last 400 years, it seems that you may have had a goal here in Barovia at one point in your life and it seems that uh, you've lost your way becoming perhaps complacent or apathetic at least that's what it sounds like to me you think I'm a defeatist well you're right I'm a bit of that and I didn't used to have a goal so much as a purpose but well, what was that purpose? Because it is possible that the four of us here are here to help you realize that purpose. 
getting personal. Well, I used to find purpose in protecting my people and their families and my sister. But now, most of them are gone. And it's probably my fault. In fact, it is my fault. Because I tried too hard to fight against he who runs these lands. He is the land. Ah, the Devil Strahd. I... Do you see, uh... Well... You fancy yourselves the ones who look arrive and triumphantly go up to that castle and slay the lord of the land, Strahd von Zarevich. Is that your goal, or are you really just trying to save children here and there? Because I can tell you, while a noble goal doesn't get you very far... Well, my goal is to get out of here. And it seems the only way out of here is through him. You don't want to make a deal with him or some some other plan B? Well, it's kind of a thought. I don't quite have a plan. But in the meantime, I do believe that for whatever reason that the four of us are here, is the same reason that we have met you. Well, maybe they... I don't believe much in fate, but I've been having some dreams recently. Convenient, convenient timing. From my... deceased sister. And I, I've been doing research, so I may seem like just a defeatist, but I've been a busybody. And there is a place that's too dangerous for me on my own, but I believe it holds the secrets to Strahd's power, and thus the power, the, the the knowledge, and perhaps the power or whatever it may be required to remove him from his throne, remove him from the land, or or anything like that. It's the only lead I've got. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Hmm. So if you can handle getting some wine, maybe you can accompany me to this place known as the Amber Temple. We can certainly, certainly help with that. All right. Then. You hear from the background, uh, Zoldar. All right. Well, um, we'll be back here tomorrow then. And he's walking up from behind the uh, <clears throat> the Blue Water Inn. I just spoke with uh, Erwin. We're keeping it hush-hush from Danica for right now, but we will be uh, leaving tomorrow before dawn. Very well. Excellent. We will see you here. One hour before dawn, we will be leaving the Blue Water Inn. Do not Perfect. be late. I'm we won't. Up all hours of the night. So, I'll be there. We'll be there. Good, excellent, and um, one last thing. I'll, in fact, I'll just wait here for you. Good, uh, then you won't be late. One last thing. I see you all with children, very often. Please don't bring the children with us. Oh, we don't plan on bringing any children. They make really great companions. You wouldn't believe the stories they tell when they walk. Well, uh, it's fine to have them around if they're your children. He looks at all of you. <laughs> I don't know if any of them are your children, so we're going to leave them behind. It's too dangerous, besides. Agreed. Fine. Fine. Have it your way. Good. I will see you tomorrow. Get rest. You will need it. Uh, we should be back tomorrow. Uh, sorry. We'll be back the following day. Just in time. One day early before the Festival of the Blazing Sun. Remember, we cannot miss the festival. 
of course, all will be well. Yeah, all will be well. All will be well, all will will be be well. well yes, but uh, all will not be well if we are not back in time. Isaac will have word with us. We do not well, want that. That's why you are c- coming with us. Yes, I mean, uh, though, you must keep up with us. Uh, if we say to leave, we mean to leave. Got it. Get your rest. Enjoy your day. And he'll uh, head on back to his home. His lovely wife. To his lovely wife, Ethel. We checked the stable for Camille. Yeah, Anna's just been like listening to this entire conversation. <laughs> what the hell are we going to do with her? <laughs> to be fair, I think go to the Anna. Stable now. Sure. To be fair, though, I think Anna would have been like checked out. I mean, she's a kid, seven year old. She probably would have just been like, you know, jumping over the cracks in the cobblestone or you well, know, whatever. She has know, been so. hideously tortured as well, so she's probably. PTSD and a little bit. Just disassociative, yeah. I think she's repressed at all, so she just seems to be like a typical kid right now. Oh, okay, good. As the conversation was happening, I also want to, like, pretend as if I was, like, braiding her hair or doing whatever it is that people with long hair do with each other's hair. And then while (laughs) doing this, I also want to, like, sneakily just, boink, like, pull out (laughs) one of her hairs and quickly pocket it. Sure, yeah. Uh, it, it, you, you know, so I think in the last episode or two episodes ago when you confronted Camilla, yeah. her hair, it looked it looked like that. It was curly, blonde hair. However, Anna's is kind of like, I mean, it's wavy, but it's certainly straighter than hers. The hair doesn't seem to match. You can tell right away. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, it, it looks blonde in a very similar way. Um, you notice that Anna has, um, um, I would say she looks like her sister, um, but you could tell, you know, like siblings, you know, one might look like one parent, the other might look like the other. That's what you get from them. Like they have a, a, a familiarity to them, but they don't look like they are like, you know, that, that alike. Um, and she'll say something to you then once this conversation kind of ends and it's like, all right, let's move on with our, our day here. She says, um, I, I have a question for all of you. She says, I don't have anything. I had a, a stuffed animal and some personal belongings at the orphanage. I don't want to go back there to get them, but they're kind of important to me. Wait, did we take any of those? Oh, I know. Yeah. I believe you did. Me. Yeah. And as I as I I'm like going in my pack to put her hair away, like the creep that I am. <laughs> but then while I'm in there, I also pull out the bear with the guts falling out, mm-hmm. so cute, and the diamond necklace. And I say, "Do these belong to you, Anna?" She looks around and she's like, "Yes," and she'll grab them if you'll let her take them. Of course, of course. She'll put the necklace on and then like hide it, tuck it in her her um her shirt. And the bear, she'll like hold under her arm and she'll say, um, these are important to me. They were my sisters. And we're going to go find her right now. Where is she? Hopefully not too far from here. Uh, Hopefully. You head around the... And, uh, Anna, I have a gift for you. And I pull out the little Russian dolls, you know, when, when you open one of the smaller ones in there. You bought those? It's no fun. It's yeah, we did. No... Is no Blinsky. Yeah. Is no fun. Is no Blinsky. You bought those? I don't remember you buying the Russian nesting dolls. Did you? We did. Oh, except okay. I took the scary thing at the at the end of it out and gave it back to him. <laughs> yes, the like mummified corpse. You took that. One yes. Out. Okay. I gotcha. took it out. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you bought it for for Micah. Oh wait, never mind. I don't have it. <laughs> you you might not have given okay, to him. He was he is he is a baby. So. Okay. Well, let's say I didn't give it to him because okay. I'm giving it to Anna. All right, she'll take it then. You head around back, and Casimir, I assume you're following them in this regard, right? That's correct. So you, you follow the group. They head behind the Blue Water Inn. Now, there's people up and about. It's, you know, midday at this point. Um, so you kind of, like, wait for 
the right time to pass where there's a, you know, there's a gap of people and you go behind into the stables and you see there is maybe the resting place that you found uh, Camilla before, but nothing's there. The, the whatever hay or whatever she uses as a bed is like dispersed. Um, she's not here. So it's kind of quiet, the stables now, right? Yeah, there's no horses or anybody here. So I want to pull Anna aside. Be like, so Anna, you were from the, you were in the orphanage. Mm -hmm. Did they ever take you out of the orphanage? Did they ever make you do things for them? They made me do some things, but we didn't leave the orphanage. You never left the orphanage. So no. you never went to the church, for example. Uh, before uh -huh. I was, before my parents died, I remember going to the church, but they're just like fuzzy memories. Okay. Well, we'll find your sister for you now. Thank you. Um, I'm really hungry. Do you think we could go inside and get some food? Well, or, well, um, Laurent, do you think we can go inside? Sure, kid. Anything for some food? Dione, do you think you could leave <laughs> some sort of note here so that Camilla knows where to find her? I assume we're just going to bring her back to our home. Yes, I will, uh, I will leave something. I, I don't know if I would have like parchment in my bag, but I'll pull I've got out a, a forgery kit, so we've got some paper at least. Nice. Okay, and I'll just scrawl a quick note with my best handwriting, <clears throat> and then just kind of the basics. Camilla, Anna is safe. She's with us. You can find her here. Yeah. Are you writing it in common? Oh yes, common. No. Thieves Not can't. thieves can't. <laughs> For example. <laughs> oh yeah. Sure, I'll write it in thieves can't. <laughs> there, there we go. Yeah. She's gonna write nice. it in thieves can. That's oh. what she's gonna do. <laughs> so you can leave a note, and uh, it'll be something very, you know, inconspicuous, like somebody leaving a letter for a stable hand or something like that. And um, you'll leave it where you found her that first time, that first night. Um, yeah. With directions to where where we live, because I'm assuming we got to drop her off now with Irina, who has to watch over her two children. Right. Yeah. The note ends up being like a whole short story about like a pony that was lost in the woods, but then found its way home and has like a happy herd. And yeah, it's a whole thing. Thieves can't. Perfect. Um, you enter into the uh, Blue Water Inn then to get some food. Yeah. And almost immediately... Irwin will see you and he's at the bar and he looks around. There's a few patrons in, but it's relatively quiet in, in, in here at this point. And he comes up to you and he goes, listen, um, to the whole group, I apologize, but my wife does not um, approve of some of you being here. And I think it'd be best. I know you're going to help us get the wine, um, but maybe, maybe if, some of you weren't here, and he looks to Dione and Laurent. Do you want us to help you or not? I do, but um, you know how it can be being married sometimes. Now, I don't mean to make a scene, but I'm going to get my voice louder, like I'm trying to make a scene. Mm -hmm. but we are here to feed this orphan child. So, I'm going to wait outside because my people aren't welcome here while you feed this orphan child. But we're not going to pay for it. Give me a persuasion check. I will. I will give you advantage. Thank you. As you uh, are playing on the orphan. You're playing the orphan card. Playing the orphan card. I'm playing the orphan card and definitely not the Vistani card. Just call out your number. Uh, 22. Oh, yeah. Uh, he looks around, and the few patrons that are there, maybe the two or three tables with, with uh, Velaki citizens, look up at him, and he's like, thank you. Uh, of course, we'll get her whatever she wants. And um, he'll bring her in. And Dione and, and um, Laurent, he, he motions to the door for the two of you. 
Oh, wait, I was at him. I'll trudge out, but the whole way I'm like passive aggressively sighing and shaking my head. Fair enough. But I follow outside, yes. <laughs> the rest of you sit down at a table and he'll bring I, over. I slap Rufus on the back and I say, hey, Rufus, old pal, it wasn't us all along. <laughs> it, is, it is quite reassuring. I did. I was concerned at one point, but I should have known that it wouldn't be me. <laughs> never. It's never you. Never you. It hasn't been yet. So your whole life. So here's what Rufus happens. Rufus and Kanas. Sorry, real quick. No, you guys ahead. are both human. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I see. Okay. Well, I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So am I. Hmm. That's true. Interesting. Okay. Wait, Kanas is not human. You're half elf. No, right. Yeah, I'm half elf. Yeah. Ah, okay. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, while I'm looking one thing up, can both of you describe your characters? Because I don't think Jordan has gotten the description of of Dione and Kanas. And Kanas has a weird. Um, had a weird raven, or yeah, raven, right? <laughs> yeah, he's a raven. Yune, uh, she's a ra in raven form right now, but it's basically his familiar. Um, I think Yune will wait though outside. Correct. That's typically what we've been doing. Sure. Okay. Um, and uh, go ahead, describe your character, Kanas, and then Dione. Uh, Kanas has like kind of like a face, like grayish silvery gray facial hair like not like a big beard but it is unkempt uh longer hair kind of looks like a bum a little bit uh with a cloak um just uh you know just your average build probably like you know five five ten or so uh, uh definitely gray under the eyes he he looks like he's uh, he looks like he's been through some stuff. He certainly uh, looks older than he actually is. Hmm. And Dione? Um, Dione is about the height of a halfling, um, but with the body composition of a dwarf. So she's very like I like to think of her as short and stout. She's quite boulder shaped. Um, and she's got this like <laughs> magnificent thick hair that just blows out from her head so all the way down her back to her feet and then she's got this luscious beard that just like sprouts out and like hits her toes and it's like midnight like obsidian black and so from far away she just looks like a small black bush um just like <laughs> shuffling along but she's also very agile so it's like a weirdly agile <laughs> boulder shaped Black Way more cloud. agile than she should be. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so the 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 two of you exit. The the rest of you sit down. Food is brought. You know, porridge or some sort of um, you know food for for her, and you can order your. Uh, if you want a wolf steak, you can order it. But that'll cost you. Um, but Dione and and uh, and Laurent, as you're standing outside, you know, sitting outside the uh, the, the Blue Water Inn, you see. Um, no doubt. You've never met Izek before, but based on the appearance and his imposing nature, you can tell that this must be the Izek, the captain of the guard that everybody's talking about. He's flanked by two um, uh, Valaki uh, guards themselves, but he stands almost a foot taller than them. He's got a completely shaved head, dark, like, piercing eyes. And one thing that stands out is that his arm um, is a bit disturbing. You can see it looks as though his right arm has like barbed spines along it. It's an elongated arm, elongated fingers and nails, and it looks as though um, he has got like some sort of supernatural strength with that arm. He wields a massive axe that is on his back right now, situated on his back, and he comes up towards the Blue Water Inn. Um, and he marches towards you. You can see he's he uh, he approaches with confidence, and he says to you all, "We're looking for an orphan. Have you seen one? So many, in fact. Yeah. Which orphan one? roaming there the streets? There is like an there is an entire orphanage. If you are looking for a child to adopt, I think any of them would be happy. 
And I make sure I really focus on his eyes as I'm talking to him. I do not look anywhere even close to his arm. I am looking right at his arm. (laughs) (laughs) He says, Do not play coy with me. Boy, isn't that a kind of fish? He'll uh, clench that rather large appendage and he will look to each of you and say, step aside. He wants to go into the Blue Water Inn. Actually, you know, they they, they just kicked us out because they're, they're at capacity. We're actually, we put in our name on the wait list. That's why we're out here waiting outside. Um, if you just tell me your name, I can I can tell the, the, the waitress, the hostess. Give me um, a deception check. <laughs> sure. Uh, let's see. Oh my god, he's okay. gonna behead us. He's gonna kill us. Uh, what's <laughs> a uh, ten? He'll take his arm and he'll grab you by the throat, Laurent, and pin you right up against the wall of the Blue Water Inn. And he looks you at you. You know, you can says, actually go in front of us in the line because uh, I, I, I bet the hostess has room for you. No, yeah, we can wait. It is okay. Uh, we can wait. No problem. He does You're his a small best. Group anyway. He does his best, Larry David, and eyes you. Gets us right up and stares into your eyes. And he looks at you and he says, Vistana. And he spits on the ground. And he says, You listen to me. Step aside. If you see an orphan, you find me or one of my guards. Do you understand? Yes. And he releases you. Okay, uh, we are happy to help, but uh, what can you describe? What does the orphan look like? Who you are looking for? Uh, Laurent, do you have a pen, pencil, or paper, something I want to take? A notes? small child. Small. Hay colored hair. Hay colored hair. Okay. She'll be what walking else? around without an, with uh, two um, accomplices. Uh, what do the accomplices look like? Are the other orphans? <laughs> oh, one, of them, one of them looks like you. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of them, them is boulder shaped with the yeah, big beard. Bugs Bunny taking notes on what Bugs Bunny looks like to Elmer Fudd. One of them <laughs> looks like a fat dwarf. Uh, you don't see many of those around here. Okay. Hmm? The other, <laughs> a man, presumably talking to some unknown entity. Talking to himself. Oh, sounds a little cuckoo. Okay. Mm-hmm. And he looks at you, Dione. And he says, now, step aside. And he goes into the Blue Water Inn. Okay, no problem. Go ahead inside the Blue Water Inn. Ahem. I try and to like project my voice so they can hear us inside. He grabs the handle, swings the door open, and enters. And this is where we're going to pause the game until <laughs> no. next week. Oh, no. You know, Bob, this is yeah. really just your fault. You didn't have to say that Anna was hungry because we weren't we weren't going to go to the Blue Water Inn. I know. Yeah, I was going to take her right back. I should have, my, in my gut, I was like, no, we should just go right back to the arena. You should have just went right back yeah, to the I house. Can't, I can't, I can't want to you could have used rations. But I thought that... I didn't you even know, in. my character didn't even know anything about the, the complications with rescuing her. We thought you just went and got her out. That's true. Your character did not know. And um, Dione and Kanas are they're new to this Stealing Orphans game. So, hey, um, Bob. Jordan? Uh, I, I was kind of biting my tongue for a second, but kind of gathering the the situation. Can I try to do something before we pause? Ooh. Do we dare go back into the grayscale? Put the grayscale back. Let's go. Grayscale gang. Oh my god. Go ahead. Um, as as Izet goes to open the door, I'm gonna say, <clears throat> you know, Izek, it seems like a better place for an orphan to be hiding would be out in the woods. Why don't you go for a stroll, and I'll cast suggestion on him. Are you? Were you outside with them? I don't know. Well, I, I thought you I went thought into the. Were all together. I th- you, so, Laurent 
and Dione were kicked out. The, you were not kicked out. Oh, okay. So then I, I guess I don't do this. However, <laughs> however, I'm excited to see what happens next week. Yeah. <laughs> we'll save, but, uh, we'll save that suggestion until like <laughs> next week. No worries. That sounds so, like um, something that could happen. I, I, <laughs> you know what? I may see the future here. This may happen. Um, well, Jordan, thank you for coming on. And I love so far Casimir. Uh, I think the group is happy to see that maybe some of these fortunes are coming true. It would be Two nice to have, have a win. Yeah. Yeah. It, What's the second one? What was the second? Um, um, the Giants. Yep. Oh, yeah. well then. Might be nice to have a win for once for this group, you know? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> two two wins. Two wins. But, but well, we, we're far off from the two wins right now. Let's get the wine first. Let's get everybody yeah. happy. Every we'll can see. be saved with a win, and we are chalking up the win, Bob. We right. still haven't found the bones. That's yeah. true. Forget the bones. This place is damned. <laughs> Yeah, it could be a could be an option, but you do have a new orphan with you. You have some more children, and uh, hopefully, you can get out of this bind with Isaac. Uh, we'll see next week. Uh, not next week, two weeks from now. So we're not going to be playing on the twenty. What's this today? The twenty sixth. We're not going to be playing on the twenty sixth. We'll be playing again in April. April second is our next game, and hopefully, we won't have any interruptions for quite some time as we. Get on to the next part of this adventure here. Um, thank you for watching. If you're watching live with us um, here on YouTube, I always appreciate it. Check the links below for descriptions. Again, I'll be posting some description, uh, some links to Jordan's channel. Um, you know, as soon as Stefano gets a channel, I'll post some of his. Uh, but for right now, he's not really doing anything, so don't worry about him. Um, and then also, I did one last announcement. I did post actually on my Patreon today. Um, for our Tomb of Horrors game that ended, you know, a few months ago now at this point, um, I posted my DM notes for how to, how I kind of started that story, the introduction to it. Um, it's free for anybody to check out, but I just posted it there so you can check that out. Um, I did post uh, about it today and I posted about it here on the YouTube community tab. So please check those out. And like I said, always any other things in the description are great to check out tokens, tabletop audio, all the rest. And uh, until next time, we will see you on the tabletop. Have a great night, everybody. Bye. Bye.